Hi everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 19 for chapter 3. In this video, we will give a couple of examples for using the method called variation of parameters. So before we begin, let's summarize um, what we have derived in our previous video. So here is the setting. Um, we want to solve a second order linear non-homogeneous equation. We call this equation N for non-homogeneous. And now assume that the general solution for the homogeneous equation, that is when g is zero, is given. That is the homogeneous solution, the general one is C1y1 plus C2y2, where y1 and y2 are both solutions for the homogeneous equation and they are linearly independent. Okay, so under this setting, then we can find a particular solution for the n, uh, a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation, and is the following. So we call it yp, that is equal to u1 as a function of t times y1, plus u2 as a function of t times y2. And then here, the u1 and the u2 satisfies the following. So u1 prime is 1 over w y2 times g, where y2 is the second solution here, and g is the right-hand side, and the w is the Brownskian of y1 and y2. Okay. And then for the u2, u2 prime is 1 over w, y1 times g. Okay, so this is um, what we derived in the um, previous video. So um, with this equation here, we call it equation C, which contains two um, kind of a first order equation where the derivatives of u1 and u2 are given. Then this one can be used to recover u1 and u2 by integrating the right-hand sides. Okay, integrating this term will give you a u1, and integrating of this function here will give you a u2. And you can choose any arbitrary constant; just pick one that makes the expression convenient. Okay, let's see how we can use this method in examples. So our first example is the following. We want to find general solution for this equation. That is y double prime minus 2y prime plus y is equal to e to the t times ln of t. And we want to solve it for t bigger than zero. We want a general solution. So for this problem, we see that um, if the right-hand side is zero, that is the homogeneous equation is given, then um, since it has constant coefficients, then we know how to find the solution. Okay, So that will be our first step to um, find a general solution for the um, homogeneous equation. Okay, Then we call the two solutions y1 and y2 and uh, we can set up the characteristic equation for this that will give us r square minus 2r plus 1 equals 0. And solving for that, we get two repeated roots, r1 equals r2 equals 1. So this means uh, we have two solutions linearly independent. y1 is e to the t and y2 is t times y1, so t times e to the t. Now, since the Brunskian is needed in the formula C on the previous page, let's calculate it. So we need the y1 prime, which is just et, and take y2 and differentiate it with product rule. We, and if you differentiate t, you get 1, so you get et plus t times 
et. So it's 1 plus t times et. Okay. And then we can put in the Brunskian of uh, the two functions. So Brunskian of y1 and y2 would equal to y1 prime times, um, no, okay, sorry, so um, y1 times y2 prime. So y1 is this, and that's y2 prime. You multiply this, and you get 1 plus t e to the 2t. Okay, and the other one is uh, negative y2 times y1 prime. So multiply this with that, I get t and then e to the 2t. So here you see that t times e to the 2t will cancel this t times e to the 2t. So we simply get a simpler expression e to the 2t. Okay, now we follow the um, summary on the previous page. The particular solution we can write as u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2 and use the formula C, we can write out the u prime, a uh, u1 prime and u2 prime. So u1 prime equals negative of uh, 1 over w, we put a w in the denominator, so y2 times g. And we see that at this stage, all these three functions are given. Let's plug them in. So what is y2? Well, y2 is t times e to the t, so that's y2 times gt. gt is this guy here, so it's et times ln of t, divided by um, w, w is e to the 2t, so we put that in. And then we see that et, et becomes e to the 2t and it cancels, so we just get t times ln of t with negative sign in the front, okay, and that is u1 prime. And u2 prime, well, in, is uh, simply y1 times g over w. So it's the same expression, but here you just put y1, which is this term. And you see it uh, will be the same as this one, except dropping the t term, which you don't have, and you change the sign. So u2 prime is just ln of t. So once the derivatives of u1 and u2 are given, then we can recover the two functions by integration. Okay, so let's um, integrate. So in u1 will be the integral of the u1 prime, which is t times ln of t, with a negative sign in the front. Okay, so. Um, here you have to perform an integration by parts, and there are some details involved here, but we trust that um, you have solid knowledge from calculus, and you can work out the detail. And, and this will be the, um, the result. There is an arbitrary constant, and we just set it to be zero. Okay, and then u2 now would be um, the integral of ln of t, and that will give us t times ln of t minus t. Okay, now we can put these back together and write out the particular solution, which is u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. u1, u2 are here, and the y1 is e to the t, and y2 is t times e to the t. Plug this in, a little bit work of simplifying the expression, you can write it as this one here. Okay, and then um, we can even write out the general solution, yt, which will be the general solution for the homogeneous equation plus the particular solution. Okay, so c1, y1 plus c2, y2 plus yp. And if we put in all the expressions, so that's y1, and that's y2, and this is yp, and that's the general solution. Okay, so without giving um, any initial condition or boundary condition, here the c1 and c2 are two arbitrary constants. Okay, so um, let's summarize this example. So this is an example where the on the left hand side is the differential equation with constant coefficient. So we can easily find the 
general solution for the homogeneous equation. And then you might ask, well, in, if that is the case, why can't we use the method of undetermined coefficient and guess a particular solution of the same form of the right hand side and see if that works? Well, um, it is possible if you uh, guess is lucky, but here, remember what is the right hand side? The right hand side is e to the t times ln of t. So e to the t times ln of t, that's your gt. And look at the particular solution we get here. It is It contains e to the t times ln of t in it, and then it has uh, ln of t has to be subtracted by a constant, and then this whole thing will have to be multiplied by a half t square. And honestly, I would never have guessed that could be a particular solution. So the problem is the term ln of t, which is um, not a um, solution that you can get for the homogeneous equation with constant coefficient. Therefore, if your expression contains terms that are other than exponential, sine, cosine, and polynomial, or combinations of them, it is very hard to guess the form of the particular solution. Okay, and the method we are studying here, we just went through this, uh, um, we called it uh, variation of parameters. This method um, works very well and gives us a form of the particular solution. And looking at it, we're convinced that um, this is a much better way of doing it by guessing, because it's really hard to guess. Okay. Okay, let's take one more example, and uh, it's the following. So it is given to us that one of the solution, y1 of t equals t, is a solution for the homogeneous equation equals zero and uh, with variable coefficients. So t square y double prime minus t y prime plus y equals zero. And in fact, you can quickly plug this function in and see that the equation holds. Okay, once that is given, um, we want to find the, um, the solution for the initial value problem. So it's the same left hand side now, the equation now is non homogeneous. I have a right hand side term and uh, it is given an initial condition at t equals 1. So y1 is given and y1 prime is given. Okay, so um, to solve this problem, actually, um, there's quite lengthy computations. So we're going to do the following in this video. I will sketch you of all the steps. Each step is something we have already learned. That is, it's the coconut on tree B, and we know how to do it. Okay, so I will just sketch it, and every step you can pause the video to work out of that step. Okay, so step one. And um, if we have y1, then we need y2, the second solution for the homogeneous linear equation given here. And that situation, we know how to do it. And the method is called reduction of order. Okay, And actually there we introduced three methods. You can use the last one, the most efficient one, and you can find the second solution y2 that is linearly independent of y1. And then we find that y2 is t times ln of t. Okay, so now once we have found y1 and y2, then we can use the variation of parameter, which we have just learned, to find a particular solution for this um, non-homogeneous equation. Okay, that is set yp to be u1 y1 plus u2 y2 and find u1 and u2, as we did in example 1. Okay, so this we know how to do. So I will skip the details, and if you go through the steps, which might take a while, then you can find a particular solution, which is half t times ln of t 
square. Okay, now we can use the two um, homogeneous solution and the particular solution to form the general solution. So the general solution is C1, Y1 plus C2, Y2 plus Yp. And we have put in all those solutions in this. So we, this is a solution where C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. Then the last step is to find the constant C1 and C2 by the two initial conditions. Okay, so what you do is you compute uh, y1, which is given, putting t to be 1, and then you have an equation containing C1, C2 equal to the y value at 1. And then you compute the y prime, differentiate this in t, and you get a function. And then you put y equals 1, because y prime of 1 is given. And then you get a second equation containing c1 and c2 on the left-hand side. And they are both linear equations. Then you can solve them and find. So there are some details here to be filled, but it's rather straightforward. So if you did everything correctly, you will have c1 is 1, c2 is 3. Okay, so once you have that, then you find the solution to the initial value problem. So, which would be in this expression to plug in C1 to be 1 and C2 to be 3. So, and this is what we get. Okay, so um, if this shall be a problem in some exam you are doing, here is a useful trick. If you have extra time at the end and you feel a little bit uncertain of this expression and it took you a lot of effort to get it and you can easily verify this. You can simply plug this equation, this uh, function here back into the differential equation to see if it satisfies and you can plug in the, C uh, the um, initial condition when t equals 1 to check the initial conditions are satisfied. Okay, so and then you can be assured that you have found the correct solution. Okay, so that's all the examples I would like to go through for the variation of parameters. And, uh, and we conclude this topic here in this video. And in next video, we will start to look at an important topic that is the applications of these second order differential equations. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this one and I look forward to seeing you next time.